This lesson is on static electricity. The word static means not flowing or staying still. And electricity is the movement of charge. So static electricity is charge that is not moving. However, static charge can move from time to time in sudden jumps. And you may have noticed this on dry days. Have you ever gotten a shock off a supermarket trolley? Or from the outside of a car on a dry sunny day? Or when you're taking clothes out of a dryer, do you hear a crackle and feel a tingle? This is all static charge. Okay, and notice I mentioned dry sunny days and from a dryer. Okay, and it is required that the atmosphere be nice and dry for this to happen. Okay, so charges, what are they? And what do we know about them? So you can have two types of charges basically, positive and negative. And neutral is when there is no charge or when all the positive charges cancel out all the negative charges. There is the same amount of both. The amount of charge is measured in a unit called coulombs, which we give the letter C. And like charges repel, so if you bring two negative charges together they will repel or push away from each other and unlike charges attract um, so a positive and a negative will move towards each other but what is charge and how is it created so to understand what charge is we need to know a little bit about the atom so at this stage I want you to pause the video, I want you to use the links, I'll have these reposted in your team, to learn a bit about the atom, the charged particles that make up the atom, and what happens if we remove some of those charged particles. So pause now and come back later. So by now you will have learned a bit about the atom and you will know that the nucleus of the atom is positive and is made up of positive protons, neutral neutrons and around the outside with the negative electrons. Okay, And in general for a normal neutral atom the number of positives, you can see there there are three red protons are balanced out by the number of electrons. You can see there are three blue electrons. So, question, what happens if you remove an electron from a usually neutral atom? So that's what's shown up here in the diagram. Essentially, uh, an electron is being removed. Well, the answer is you have removed some of the negative charge. The atom is now no longer neutral it is left with an overall positive charge. It has more positive than negative. So the atom is now charged and a charged atom is called an ion. In this case, when you remove an electron, you have a positive ion. Okay, so still on the topic of ions, it is also possible from for an atom to receive an extra electron. What happens if you add an electron to a usually neutral atom? That's what we see in the picture above. Um, we have fluorine which uh, normally has um, those red electrons and it receives an extra one. Okay, that's the blue electron. The answer is you have added some negative charge the atom now is left with an overall negative charge because it has more negative than it does positive. And a charge atom is called an ion. In this case, it is a negative ion. So we can create positive and negative ions, so charged objects. How do we do that? Well, we can do it very simply. And we can take, um, you'll see in a moment, plastic pieces of plastic, plastic rods from the laboratory and just by using friction or rubbing them with some fabric 
we can add or subtract electrons and therefore charge the plastics positively or negatively we're making ions okay so to read here charging rods positively and negatively friction caused by rubbing the polythene rod so polythene is a type of plastic you see it in a moment in the videos so this is our polythene rod and if we rub it with a piece of fabric or cloth electrons are removed from the cloth and given to the polythene rod okay so here's my cloth and electrons E minus go from the cloth to the rod so we're adding electrons to the rod and the cloth the wool for example loses electrons so now it's negative it's positive and the polythene rod gains electrons it's now negatively charged so here minus and and those letters is a short way of writing negatively charged okay so polythene I want you to remember there's lots of E's in polythene so think of lots of electrons polythene becomes negative so link polythene with the word negative okay so polythene can become negative through friction what are you doing little electrons are being plucked off the wool atoms and transferred to the polythene rod another example here we have is friction caused by rubbing perspex rods so perspex is a different type of plastic and it will contain different types of atoms okay and for perspex if you rub it with a cloth it removes electrons from the perspex so in this case electrons go from the perspex to the cloth okay and why is it different it's down to the atomic makeup in the rods okay so different atoms different things happen okay and this time the wool is negatively charged because it gained electrons and the perspex lost electrons so now it is positively charged okay and to make some kind of connection remember polythene goes negative perspex that's kind of like if you use your imagination rotated a plus sign it goes positive so try to remember that polythene goes negative perspex goes positive Okay, so now we're going to um, take our pieces of plastic and charge them by friction. And friction means to um, rub them against a rough surface, uh, like a piece of fabric. Uh, denim jeans works well. Okay, we're going to start with the perspex. And on the desk, I have some very small pieces of paper, which um, can be attracted by charge. Okay, now you see currently nothing is happening. So I use friction, so a piece of fabric, okay, and I'm going to try and charge this piece of perspex. Now let's pass it over the pieces of paper and we see that we see some movement. So yes, okay, so a piece, piece of paper are attracted to it. So what does that mean? It means currently on the perspex rod, uh, we have some charges okay so we're not sure is it positive or negative and let's repeat that for the polythene okay so let's charge it by friction and pass it over the 
pieces of paper. So, oh yes, okay, so we see definite attraction there, movement. So the charge is present, okay. And finally, the ebonite. Okay, so we see some slight movement there. So the longer uh, you apply the friction, the greater the charge you're going to have. All right. And um, also, if the air is dry in the environment, so if you wanted to dry them with a hair dryer or something first, a piece of plastic, you'd have, um, you'd see greater results. You can try that with any piece of plastic, like your pen or your ruler, and have a go. Now, so what we're going to investigate next is whether these three plastics charge in the same way. We know that like charges attract each other and unlike charges or opposite charges repel each other. They push apart. And to do so, I'm just taking this. It's the base of a plastic glass, but any insulating object uh, that will allow you to balance one of the rods on top of it uh, will work. I'm going to start with polythene because it's one of the lighter rods and will hopefully be able to rotate a bit easier. Now firstly, I'm going to charge the polythene using friction. And we know that we've learned that polythene should um, turn negative. Okay, you hear a little crackle now as I charge it. So that means it's getting quite highly charged. And I'm going to balance it on my uh, plastic base if I can. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to start with the ebonite. And I'm going to charge it by friction. Okay, and I'm going to now bring it close to the end of the polystyrene rod and see if we see any movement. So close but not touching. And I can see the polystyrene rod. It is rocking a little bit from side to side. Maybe if we charge our ebonite a little bit more. I'll bring it close to it. I can see it pushing away. Okay, so they're repelling. So I can conclude from that. And it's going backwards a little bit as well. Not so much. Um, I can conclude from that that ebonite and polythene charge in the same way. So they're both the same charge. There we go. Okay. So if polythene is, as we think, negative, well then so is the ebonite. Okay, let's see the perspex then. Uh, let's charge that. And let's bring it close to the polythene and pulls it towards it. Okay, so instead of pushing it away, let's see if we can repeat that now. It very evidently pulled it towards it. Let me charge a little bit more. It pulled it towards it without touching it. Okay. So we can conclude that the charge on the polythene and the charge on the perspex are opposites because they are attracted. Okay, so a note on earthing next. Static electricity is due to electric charges that remain at rest on an object and the charges cannot move off or move away from the object. So in the previous demonstrations, when I used friction, there were charges on the polythene rod and they stayed on the polythene rod until maybe I touched it or there was moisture in the air that took it away. Okay, so the electricity stays on the charged object until it finds a route away from it. And the reason for that is because the material on which they stand are insulators. So polythene, perspex and the ebonite, they're all insulators. 
and the definition for an insulator, which you'll find on your new definition pages, is Insulators are substances which do not allow electric charges to flow through them easily. And examples are all of the plastics we've just looked at and the rubber and things like glass. Um, other insulators would be like wood, um, anything at that electricity does not flow easily through. It is the reason we use plastics and rubber um, to coat electrical cables uh, to make many electrical devices. A plastic rod is a good insulator and it can build up and store quite a lot of electric charge. This charge will remain on the rod for a long time. Why? Because it does not have a route to leave. The opposite to insulators then are conductors and here we have the definition in red. Conductors are substances that allow electric charge to flow through them easily. So for example the metals. So uh, copper is a common metal used in electrical wiring. For that reason it allows electric charge to flow through them easily. So if you had a copper rod of a similar shape and size to the ones we've used there, no amount of, of friction uh, will cause charge to build up. Why? Because it flows away through them, um, through you or whoever's holding them as well. Okay, if a conductor touches the plastic rod the conductor becomes the escape route for the built-up charge. Okay, charge moves from the rod where there is a surplus of charge. Surplus means too much, okay, or extra charge to a neutral object like the earth through a conductor. So the earth overall, when you add up everything that's going on in the earth and all the little charges, overall it is neutral and really it acts as a big sponge for any charges that are flying around. Okay, they'll go to earth and they're quite happy there. Okay, and this is called earthing. So examples of earthing. Earthing means connecting an object to the earth using a conductor so that the object loses its charge to the earth. Okay, now the first two examples here will be used as a safety measure. Okay, because of lightning. Now what is lightning? Lightning is um, static electricity that's built up in the skies, so specifically on um, in the clouds, so on the little water droplets in stormy weather and in the right weather conditions, lots and lots of um, static electricity builds up there, okay, because of friction and molecules banging against each other up in the sky, okay. Now when that gets really, really large um, and the highly charged cloud, let's imagine there's a cloud here and there's lots and lots and lots of charges in it, the highly charged cloud um, spots a route to ground. So for example, this metal fence or the Eiffel Tower. It can discharge in one big flash and jump to it in an attempt to get to ground. Okay, so that's when you see the lightning flash and um, then the metal object or the metal building forms a route to ground for the charge. Okay, so in the first picture these extra cables have been um, added there to earth the um, the fence. So rather than the charge staying on the fence and being extremely unsafe for anybody passing by, the charge goes to ground. Okay, and most tall buildings like the Eiffel Tower are like churches, cathedrals, mosques, um, skyscrapers, they will have a lightning rod on the top of it. Okay, so a piece of metal at its highest point that's very attractive for the lightning as opposed to the rest of the building and then there will be a cable that allows the charge to go down to ground rather than going through the building and doing really bad structural damage. 
Okay. Um, have you seen these on the back of cars? Well, these are kind of rubber strips, but there is a gr there is metal going through them. Okay. Now on sunny days, your car is traveling at speed through nice, warm, dry air. Uh, there's lots of friction and static can build up on the outside of your car. If you get out of the car and go to close the door, then you get a bit of a shock. All right. What these do here is they will earth the car to the ground as it's traveling along. Okay. And the last picture there is of a three pin plug that we use here in Ireland. Um, not every country uses these. Okay, the third pin here is a safety device, okay, and it goes to ground. That means if the, your kettle or your hairdryer malfunctions and goes live, okay, for whatever reason, rather than the electricity trying to go through you to get to ground, uh, it will go through the earth wire. Okay. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at today is something called the gold leaf electroscope. So it's a very simple device, but it's used for studying charge, detecting charge. Is there charge there? And maybe what type of charge it is. Okay, so here's a schematic of it. It consists of a little box and there's windows in it so that we can see inside. There is a metal cap at the top. Okay, a circular disc, it's metal, and it's held in place with an insulating plug, meaning it's not connected to the outer casing. Okay, and uh, there's a piece of metal that goes straight down. All right, and then attached to that is a piece of gold leaf, so very thin gold foil. Okay, and um, the outside of the electroscope would be earthed as well. Okay, so a gold leaf electroscope is an instrument used to detect charge. It consists of a metal cap and rod connected to a gold leaf at the base. An earth box around it with a glass window and an insulated plug to hold the rod. So you'll see that now in a minute. And the gold leaf electroscope can be used firstly to detect charge. Is an object charged or not? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we would bring the object, in this case it is a plastic rod, PVC rod, close to but not touching the metal plate. Okay, and then we see what happens. So here we have a negatively charged rod, let's say it's PVC or Perspect. And if we bring it close to the electroscope, which initially is completely neutral, okay, if we bring it close to the neutral electroscope, uh, what happens is that the electrons in the metal part of the electroscope try to repel from the PVC rod. Okay, so electrons take a route from the top as far away as possible from the PVC rod. Okay, because they're like chargers, they get repelled by it. And so they go as far as they can go, which is to the tip of the metal rod and the gold leaf. And now these two are of equal charge or of similar charge. And so they will repel each other. Okay, and because the gold leaf is so light and flexible, it moves up. So the rod and the leaf are now both negatively charged and like charges repel the gold leaf diverges. You'll see that in a moment. Okay, and similarly, if you bring a positive plastic rod, okay, close to the neutral electroscope, okay, what happens here is that the electrons, so electrons are kind of free to move within a metal, Okay, the electrons move up towards it. Okay, and as a result, there's overall positive left at the bottom of the rod and on the gold leaf. And because these are of the same kind, they're going to repel. And what you see is the um, gold leaf going up. 
So the stem and the leaf are now both left with an overall positive charge, like charges repel, and the gold leaf diverges. Okay, how much does it diverge by depends on how charged the rod is in the first place. Okay, so here's our gold leaf electroscope, and what I'm going to do first is bring a negatively charged rod, which is the polyphene, close to the plate. Okay, and let's see what happens. Okay, so bringing it close, we can, you can see the gold leaf diverge. So I haven't touched it, and um, what's happening here is that the gold foil and the straight metal bar that it's attached to now have the same charge and like charges repel and so they move apart from each other. Okay, that's the polythene. Let's repeat that with perspex, which we know should charge positive. Okay, I'm just charging it by friction and bring it close to the plate again. This is perspex and we can see that it diverges there. They are um, of the same charge, the gold leaf and the bar that it's connected to. Um, now you see the gold leaf didn't diverge so much in that case because I didn't spend very much time charging the perspex. So let's see, can I get a greater effect by charging the perspex a little bit more and when I bring it closer as well, it makes a difference. So I'm just charging the perspex a little bit more and we'll see do we get a more dramatic effect. Close to it, and yes, you do get a stronger effect um, if you charge it some more. And when we remove the perspex, it goes back to normal. So now we're going to see how you can charge the gold leaf electroscope um, positively so you can charge it and leave it charged. So here's the diagrams I'm going to be talking about. All right. So firstly, bring a negatively charged object close to the plate. So that could be your polythene rod. We've seen that and we've seen how the leaf diverges. OK. Electrons in the electroscope will want to escape from the like charge. OK, so you can see they go down. Touching the plate then. Uh, which is in part two. See, this could be me and my hand, okay? If I touch the plate at this stage, all right, I provide a route to ground for the electrons that are here, right? Firstly, they will gather down along here to get away from the polythene rod, right? When I touch the cap of the electroscope then, they will make a big rush to get away from the polythene rod, which is still here, and go to Earth. Okay, um, so they'll make a big rush, and then when the electrons have left the electroscope, thereby leaving the overall uh, electroscope positive, if I remove myself and the polythene rod from the situation, it will be left overall positive. And what you actually see is the leaf diverges one more time, but this time because they're, the leaf and the rod are positive. Okay, so we'll try and see that in action now in a moment. The electroscope is now charged positively. Touching the plate again will provide a route to earth for charge and the electroscope discharges and the leaf collapses. Now we're going to charge the electroscope positively and leave it charged like that. And to do that we need a charged negative item like the polythene rod. So let's bring it close to the plate and you can see the leaf diverges. Right? And then I'm going to use my finger and myself as a root to earth for those charges. So I'm touching it and you can see that the leaf collapses. Now I'm going to remove my finger and the polythene rod at the same time. And now you can see there is a permanent displacement so of the gold leaf. All right, so there is a charge that remains on the electrical. Okay. 
Now, the other use of the gold leaf electroscope is to identify charge. So identify meaning to, to tell, is it a positive charge? Is it a negative charge? Is it a big charge? Is it a small charge? Okay, so you start with the positively charged electroscope from the previous example. Take a positively charged electroscope. And um, if you bring a positively charged object close to the plate, the leaf will deflect even further. So it'll go up even more. Okay, so you're adding more pluses to the situation. Uh, there's a greater force of repulsion. Okay, so um, it will deflect even further. So that's how you tell is it positively. If you bring a weakly charged object through it, you'll get some deflection. If you bring a much strongerly charged object close to it, you get a greater deflection. On the other hand, if you bring a negatively charged object close to the plate, the leaf will collapse um, because plus and minus are, are attracted. What happens okay. when you bring a negatively charged object close to the positively charged electroscope, the leaf collapses further. I don't know if you can see that. So the leaf is up somewhere and it collapsed or fell down. What happens if you bring a positively charged object close to the positively charged electroscope? The leaf diverged further. So that was very obvious. And here we have some more examples of uh, the generation of charges and the building up of charge. Okay, uh, you may have seen lots of pictures or videos about this before in science labs. This is called the Van der Graaff generator. Okay, and what you have is a big metal dome, but inside that dome are uh, two wheels, motorized wheels, and a rubber belt. Okay, so the rubber belt is the insulator. All right, that's uh, going to create the charge, static charge, when it rubs against a comb down here. So this is the friction. So it's rubbing against that. Electrons are removed, and so you can see this um, positive charges are um, generated. Okay, and at the top there's another comb connected to the inside of the metal dome. All right, and so remember, all these positive charges are like charges and they all want to get away from each other. They, they're repulsed or they do not like each other. So they travel out to the dome in an attempt to get away from each other. The dome is metal, it's a conductor. And so the pluses will start to gather on the outside of the conductor. They always gather on the outside and they'll try and spread out as much as possible to get away from each other. Okay, and so that uh, building up of charge continues. Now, this lady here has stood next to the Van der Graaff generator. She will be standing on a rubber mat. Why the rubber mat? Because it's an insulator and it won't allow the charge to go straight to ground or maybe she has thick rubber soled shoes. Okay, she can put her hand on it. I recommend doing that before you switch it on. All right, and what happens then is that the not only does the the plus has built up here lots. It want they want to get further away from each other again, so they'll go down, and they'll go to the tip of each hair on her head, and then they'll start to spread out because like charges repel. So these hair individual hairs are acting like the gold leaf they're spreading out okay and you can see that her hair makes that wonderful pattern or wonderful shape okay now if you stand next to her but close enough right without touching her what might happen is the charge on her might jump across to you okay and you get a shock so if you're close enough they'll spot you and they'll say there's a nice route to ground and they'll make that jump Okay, so we've had lots of fun in the lab with that one. Okay, or if you put another conductor close by, the charge, it will discharge, it will jump across in an attempt to get to ground always. 
okay and you can visually see it that way if a route to ground is placed near the charged surface it may jump to the nearby conductor to make its way to ground so you see the spark this is called discharge this is similar to lightning jumping from a cloud to the lightning rod okay and just another note on charge distribution on conductors okay what happens is remember that charges want to get away from each other so in general they spread out as much as they can so charges on a conductor may not distribute themselves evenly so on a sphere like the top of the van der Graaff they'll spread out as much as they can okay and quite evenly spaced out but if you have different shapes for example a pointy end the charges tend to build up here okay and what will happen then is from the point that's where the discharge or the lightning will happen okay because there's lots of it there so charges are more concentrated at a point and more spread out on a flat surface